Welcome back to the Mike Robinson YouTube channel. On this episode, I'm out with my good friend and master chef, Ross, to harvest fallow doughs late season. Also, we're stalking muntjac, which we're gonna be breaking down at my gorgeous restaurant, The Elder in Bath, and we're cooking a roast rack of muntjac with a bone marrow sauce. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. So this is an interesting situation and this is replicated all over Britain and it's one of the reasons we have a problem with wild deer is um, on some pieces of land for whatever reason the landowners made the decision that they don't want the deer to be harvested managed and this is one of those safe zones where the deer feel very safe and comfortable and are always here and there's usually about 200 um, but in the whole area around here there's probably 600 or a thousand and uh, you know, this just makes it a bit harder to keep those numbers under control because two thirds of those are female that are pregnant. So there's another 150 youngsters, maybe 170 youngsters popping out in uh, two to three months time. And that's, and uh, that is a population we have to then address next year before we even start to bring the population down a little bit. Again, we're not trying to cull, mass cull these deer. We're trying to find a happy medium, a nice sustainable asset of a population. Anyway, let's go find some deer we can shoot. So this is your classic muntjac buck. This is a two-year-old male muntjac. Here is what, look at the teeth come in and have a look at these. Razor sharp, they can really screw a dog up. Extremely sharp. Muntiacus reevesi, a little, uh, see these big scent glands here. <clears throat> and I aim just behind the ear. There we are, there's the entrance to that little 6.5 Creedmoor. And so we've got no meat damage, a lovely carcass, I've bled it. So we'll take it up the hill and growlick it. So, good start to our visit. I've had two outings in a row. I've gone out deliberately for Muntjac and failed. And on the way in, just saw this one nipping around and thought, I'm gonna go and get that. With an opportunistic Muntjac in the bag, which is brilliant, we proceed to carry out the main objective of today, which is to try to harvest some fallow does. We spot a group, creep in stealthily, and now it's my buddy Ross's turn to shoot. A broadside, no headshots in this wind. Yeah, shoot. Ready? That's really good. When you cull harvest enough deer, you get problems. Now, normally that's because the shot wasn't placed correctly. In this case, Ross did a fantastic shot. Both entry and exit were literally textbook. If you go on the British Deer Society or the British Association for Shooting and Conservation Deer Management Qualifications, and you look at that exit hole, anybody would say that that is a perfect shot. And the entry hole is on the same place on the other side. So um, I, I do not know, not know what's happened here. Ross, you're not shooting Hornady bullets, that's the problem.
right through the shank, straight through. Wiggle, wiggle, it'll come off. So there's a notch and it's only... So you take that off before you take yeah, the muscles yeah, yeah. out? Oh, okay. If we're butterflying the shank, it's down there. So it goes straight through like that. And so then with that, I've got you. So then what What do you want off from here? Just so I know. Sorry. Um, so, there we go. So we're going to French trim those, keep them, and we use them for starters. Yeah. So if you can just take the bone out, butterfly it. Oh, you want it all? Oh, sorry. Whole I was thing taking one go. It. Oh, right. This one. I'm going through. Now. Sorry? Can I have this off? Yep. Got a, just so this is a classic saddle now. Oh, you Absolutely sure? perfect. That is a saddle that, of Munt Jack. Look at that, boys. Yeah, lovely. How nice would that be for two people Roast as a special, bone. roasted on the bone? <clears throat> Just gorgeous. Saddle for two. Trimmings. Shoulders straight off like so. Right, you well? Yep. You ready for this? Yep. Where do you want it taken off at the first first rib like that? Yeah, and then go. Neck embracing as well. Right, there you go. And he's gonna give us French trimmed racks. Long bone. You hold one side, Liam, you hold the other. Keep your hands out of the way. There you go. And I'm only using the end, like quarter inch of my knife tops. What we're doing here is popping open where the intercostal muscles, yeah. the ribs join, yeah. and then you can literally just do that, and there you go, Yoel. Take it away. All right. Oh, got you, yeah. There's the hole, so you go underneath it. Ah, uh, you gotta do the spine, from right. the spine. Yeah, got you. Like that? Yeah. Now tight into the spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't lose any meat. Oh, she comes. Perfect. So now, You've got to get chop that about there. Yep. We don't need it much longer. That may be there. Yep. All right, to cut it. Uh, you can use a chopper if I were you. Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, French trim and clean. And I'll come back to you in a few minutes. The reason we do this is to allow, I'm going to take out that bit of shank. Yeah. And you lightly, you've got to be light with your knife, is you're allowing everything to cook Heat on the grill mode. at exactly the same speed. And look, there are different muscles here. And you see that rolls open, watch, like that. And there are different muscles that cook at different speeds. Yeah. So there, look. Sweet, right? Yeah. And wherever you've got a nice round muscle, make a little cut in it. The whole thing's the thickness Even. of a sirloin steak, so it will take no longer to cook. Boom. So we're doing a very simple little French trimming job. French trimming is where you basically want it to look really fancy pants. So you take out the intercostal muscle between the ribs from each one. Now there is a technique on a bigger deer, like a fallow deer, where you can scrape and peel back this membrane, but Munjak is so small, and same with Chinese water deer, doing what I'm doing is the easy way of doing it. And when it roasts, they will dry out and they will look great. So the prime meat we've got is, here we go, we've got them both here. We got the saddle and we got the French trimmed rack or what we call the best end. Best end for a reason. Haunches, shanks, shoulders, and then here we have trim. And this will be roasted really hard till it's golden and then put into our sauce to make venison sauce. Simple tricks, make the most out of your deer. Now we've got our beautiful French trimmed racks of the Muntjac I shot. Here we are and 
Nunjak is a wonderful ingredient. But I'm going to serve it with a sauce, which is our classic red wine sauce, simple basic beef stock reduction, which has been cooked with roasted venison bones. And then this bad boy is going to be the winner. So I've got a piece of bone marrow, stick the spoon in behind it, the handle of it. There we are. And this is some lovely bit of bone marrow. And I'm literally just going to chop it. And get this from any butcher. Take out, there's no secret to it. I'm going to cut this into a dice like that. And that dice is going to go into our sauce two minutes before we serve and just melt and split. And it's going to be utterly, utterly delicious. Big knob of butter, foaming. Cloves of garlic. Not okay, so what you want, you want the butter foaming, you don't want the butter too hot. If the butter stops to foam, it will just heat the, fl it will hit the flesh and then roll off. So you want to keep adding butter. Do you, you want to, it sounds a little bit weird, but you just want to cool the pan down. And so if it's foaming, it will just kick it evenly through the flesh and it won't just roll off. So that's what you want. If it goes too far, it will just burn and then it will hit the flesh and run off. It won't, it won't wrap itself around the meat. I've got some beautiful red wine sauce here. Right there, that's our base sauce. Warming it up. The bone marrow will immediately start to melt. Meanwhile, the butter and this beautiful, ridiculously rich mash, which has got some chives in it. I'm just gonna fold that through, warm it up, enrich in the butter. And that bone marrow sauce looks filthy. Yeah. So you just wanna rest it upside down so the liquid goes back through, back into the flesh. Good little tip is to blot the meat with clean paper get less dribbling that way. If you carve from underneath like this, you actually can see the line between the bones, like so, and then you get immaculate little perfect single chops. Everybody's happy. I mean, let's just have a look at a chop. <gasps> mm. oh. What do you think, Joe? That's lovely, mate. Got some of the bosses of the uh, hotel group here. So we thought we'd give them a little snack. Can you open the door? So, that was me, I've been and bought a sandwich. Shut up and move your laptop, man. <laughs> this, is, this is a uh, roasted wrap of Muntjac with... Oh gosh, we've got this. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, how are you? Nice to well. yeah. And you. With, and bone, you. <gasps> with bone marrow sauce, okay, and uh, bone marrow red wine, venison gravy, and dirty chive mash. Dirty chive mash. It's only a taste, obviously, if we were doing this for people, we'd give them a little more munt jack, but it's just for you. Wow. I know it's next level, isn't it? Mm. This is kind of new elder. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Part of the experience. So, like, taste that. <laughs> we'll send someone up to get the place. Thank you. <laughs>